Hey, good evening. Another Wednesday night, another Open Mic Magic show. Welcome to you all. Oh, I've got this not on gallery view. I can't see you all. Ah, there you are. Hi, everyone uh, out there in our lovely gallery. And hi, everybody on Facebook Live and those now watching us live. It's just told me Twitch has gone live. So hi to everyone in the Twitchiverse. Right, we've got a fantastic show, as always, lined up for you tonight. And we're starting off slightly differently. We are going to go via a video. So uh, our good friend in the USA, Alan Fisher. I've, I've got something special um, today. We uh, are starting the school year up again here in the States. Um, and so I'm back to doing some of my school programs, uh, going around to the schools. And I, I have a segment where I talk a little bit about American history. And we do a little magic, what I call counting on history. So uh, I thought I'd, I'd share a little segment with you here tonight. It involves this, the preamble to the Constitution of the United States. Now, for all of our friends watching outside of the U.S., this is probably just going to be a little bit of a refresher um, on, on um, the history here. Uh, for those of us in the United States, uh, this will all be brand new because none of us paid attention in school. So I want you to... to uh, Take a look at, at our document here. This is actually what is known as the preamble to the Constitution. I'll, I'll just briefly read it. It's we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Now, I've got some some facts about this. Uh, the preamble, what it's doing is it sets the stage for the Constitution. It clearly communicates the intentions of the framers and the purpose of the document. Now, see, the preamble is an introduction to the highest law of the land, but in and of itself, it is not the law. It does not define government powers or individual rights. The preamble was placed in the Constitution during the last days of what was called the Constitutional Convention by, and get this, the Committee on Style and Arrangement. It was not proposed or discussed on the floor of the Constitution beforehand. They just added it. And the initial wording did not refer to the people of the United States, rather, it referred to the people of the various states, which was the norm at the time. The word people was not used in, in earlier documents. Um, and of course, these United States was used, followed immediately by a listing of the states from north to south. Now that change was made by the committee head, a gentleman named Governor Morris, who wanted to advance the idea of citizens being of a single union of states rather than how most Americans at the time thought of themselves as citizens of their individual respective states. The preamble imparts three central concepts for the document. It's the source of power to enact the Constitution, i.e. the people of the United States, the broad end to which the Constitution is ordained and established, and finally, the author's intent for the Constitution to be a legal instrument of lasting prosperity. Now that's a whole lot to be put in just one paragraph, but there's a lot in there. And in fact, there's a lot of magic in there, not just the fact that we were creating out of nothing a brand new country, but this particular part of the document actually has magic in it. I'm, I'm going to have someone help me. Um, and we're going to play a counting game. But beforehand, let me make a prediction of something. And I'm going to try to keep this in view so you know I haven't switched it out. So I'm going to just stick it right here in my glasses. That way it'll always be in frame and you'll always be able to see it. Um, uh, Tommy, why don't you just give me a hand with this as a, a fellow American? What I'd like you to do is yeah. just pick any word in this first line, and we're going to play a counting game. What's going to happen is, if you can see under 
each word I have a number and mm -hmm. that corresponds to how many letters are in each word. Mm -hmm. And so the counting game we're going to play is from your start point, we'll count the letters through like, like, let's say if you had, if, a is one, so we'd go one. More is four. One, two, three, four. Justice is seven. Boom. And we'll work our way through from wherever you want to start in this first line all the way through, and we'll go as far as we can go. Like if we happen to land on United, well, there's not six words after that, so we're stuck there. We're stuck on states. Uh, we'd be stuck on of. Uh, we'd be stuck on America. So we'll go as far as we can in the document based on your start point. And based on where you start is going to determine where we end. So which of these words in the first line do you want me to start counting on? Uh, United. United. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's a number six, six letters in it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. A. So we get one to more. That's four. One, two, three, four. Justice is seven. One, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven. Common. Make sure this doesn't slip. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're on and. That's a three. One, two, three. Ooh, blessing is big. Nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ordain is a six. One, two, three, four, five five, six, the is a three, one, two, three. Uh, okay, we don't have two words left. So we, we end on of, that's where we stop. And it's a very small word, but it's a very big word because it's the United States of what? Of America. As they were saying, you know, in the uh, little piece of history I read, people didn't think of themselves as part of America. They thought of themselves as from their individual states this is where we first brought together the idea that we were the united states of america so that of is a very powerful word in fact it's so powerful and you just happen to end on of and it just happens to be the word that i selected as where i knew you were going to end Thank you so much, Tommy. Back to you. So from Alan to uh, our good friend in Texas. Hi there, Robin. Come on in.
Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Fantastic stuff. Staying in the USA, over to uh, a fantastic magician, Lee Germain. Come in, Lee. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I don't know if fantastic is exactly the word. I think phenomenal is, is, is much better. But uh, we're going to go with fantastic. Uh, now, before we get started here, I do need somebody to help me. And I noticed our friend Jill is in the audience. So uh, if you could highlight Jill, uh, have her come over to help me, I would appreciate it. Good evening, Jill. How are you? Absolutely fine. Getting packed yeah. ready to go to Scotland. Oh, oh, lucky for you. My son was there a few years ago and loved it. Like, well, he's a scotch there. drinker. Oh, 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 wow. Well, great, great. Well, he's a scotch drinker, so he, he's got to love it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay, Jim, what we're going to do, let me change cameras here real quick. Uh, let's do this and this. And there we go. Mm -hmm. Now, you notice on the table, I have a deck of cards and three die. Okay. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to show you that I had, I had a premonition. I don't make predictions. I, I, make, I, I go with my guts. I, I'm what they refer to in the mentalism community as an intuitive. Uh, I don't foretell the future. I just go with my gut and the feelings and my intuition of what's going to, uh, to happen or take place. Now, inside my pack of cards, I do want to show you one thing. I have one red back card, and you can see, I hope you can read that. It says, you will roll, okay? Oh, right. Okay. Now, first of all, let's, uh, let's get rid of that. Put that right there, put that right there. Let's try it this way and see if it works a little bit better. That should do it, and there we go. Now, Jill, the three die that are laying here, you can use three, you can use two, or you can use one. How many die would you like to use to roll? Two. Two? Okay. Yeah. Does it matter which? I do want you to see that these are all just normal die. There's nothing loaded about them. There's nothing special about them. Uh, any particular one you want me to remove? Uh, the middle one. The middle one, this one right here, done deal. Okay, now if you were here, you would be rolling this. But since you're not here, I'm going to roll them for you. And you tell me when you're satisfied with the number that comes up. For instance, that's nine. Would you like me to roll again? Yes. Okay. And that is six. Would you like me that'll, to roll again? No, that'll do. Six will do. Okay. So let's see what we have here. Now there's one two, three, four, five, six. You stopped me on the three of hearts. Now, had you chosen five, you would have stopped me on the three of spades. If you had chosen four, you'd have stopped me on the five of clubs. Had it come up seven, you would have stopped me on the king of diamonds. Eight, it would have been the ace of clubs. Okay, now let me show you what's going on here. Because if I go through these cards, we see there's one card right here. And on the back is that card I showed you earlier saying you will roll. Okay, it says you will roll a six. And you will end up at the three of hearts. Wow. Okay. Thank you very I'm much. Impressed. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Coming for you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin, back to you. Wow. Fantastic. Excellent. Thank you, Lee. Rescuing us from the technolo technological issues that we've been having, if that's even a word. Um, so, <laughs> from the USA, back to GB. Well, it's not apparently in the UK, but it's in Great Britain. It's uh, in the Irish Sea. It's called the Isle of Man. And our very good spooky friend, Michael Kelly, is there. Come in, Michael. Thank you, Kevin. Hopefully I won't have any tech issues tonight. My internet was a little choppy last night. It turned out it was updating. But there we go. Well, thank you for joining me tonight. Here 
in the study of Sherlock Holmes in Baker Street, because I'd like to carry out a little experiment and repeat a challenge that Holmes was set by his nemesis, Professor Moriarty. Now, one day, Sherlock Holmes received a package, and in that package were five black envelopes and a letter from Professor Moriarty. I'll just read this to you. Dear Mr. Holmes, on countless occasions, I had the pleasure of personally verifying your acumen, with which you tenaciously persist in hindering my activities. Therefore, let homage to your genius with this frivolous present. In one of these envelopes, <clears throat> I smudged a fair amount of Radix Pedis Diabolus, the potent poison whose effectiveness you've already once been able to verify. I've carefully chosen the envelope in which I concealed it. Hence, I challenge you to open all the remaining ones without making mistakes. If your science of deduction is as infallible as you claim, it will not be difficult for you to foresee my moves. Otherwise, merely touching the contents of the wrong envelope will conclude your life and thus your irritating forays into my business. Of course, no one would blame you if you do not want to accept this challenge. Similarly, no one would know that decision except your ego. Yours truly, Professor Moriarty. So four envelopes, one of them containing poison, the other four contain Professor Moriarty's business cards. In actual fact, at the moment, for our experiment, all five envelopes contain Moriarty's business card. One of you is going to play the role of Moriarty in a moment and replace one of those business cards with a card representing the poison. But let's have a look at the envelopes first. Each one has a symbol on the front. They're very similar to the symbols you find on ESP cards. There's a square, a star, a circle, a triangle, and a cross. And these will help me to deduce which one you choose. So could I have a volunteer, please, Stuart? Somebody who would like to play the role of Moriarty and try to poison yeah. me. Yeah, we've got Bruce with your hand. There we go. Hello, Bruce. Michael. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'll show you the card representing the poison. That is printed both sides. And these are the five envelopes. They have the marks on the front. They're all completely one marked on the back. And each one at the moment contains one of Moriarty's business cards. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep this hand. Where I can actually I'm gonna look under my chin so I can get it easy because I'm gonna to have to close my eyes for this. I'm gonna give these a good mix up to start with so that we don't know which ones were. And you shout out when you're happy that they're all mixed enough. That's good. Okay. Now I'm gonna I've got my eyes closed. I'm going to look away. I'm holding the poison in my hand. I'm going to hold them up and I'm going to put them from front to back. And you tell me to stop on the symbol you want to put the poison in. I'm hoping you can see it. Okay. Yeah. Right there. You want it in this one? Yes. Okay, so the first thing is to take the business card out. I will put the poison card in if I can find the opening. That there, yeah. Tap that right down in. You can 
see that completely in there at any point again. And now I'll mix them up again. And if you again shout out when to, when you'd like me to stop. Stop. Okay. So there's the first business card, James Moriarty. Now we've got these five envelopes. I'm going to lay them in a row, but you're going to decide which order they go in from this side to this side. Which position would you like the square in? In the middle. The, Three. That's the central one. Right. How about the circle? Uh, far right. My far right. Your uh, far left. This side? Yep. The cross? Uh, your far right. The triangle? Uh, in between the cross and the circle. Ah, uh, they're the two extremes. The here? Oh, here? I'm sorry. In, be in between the circle and the cross. Yeah, there. Here? But this yeah. one's the square. Oh, I'm sorry. And that's the circle. And that's okay. The and so the star would go in the fourth place. Right. Okay, now I have to try to deduce where you would put the, uh, um, the poison. Just as Holmes had to deduce which one Moriarty had put it in. So at the moment we have cross, triangle, square, star, and circle. Well, to begin with, I don't believe since obviously you know which one of these has the poison in. I don't believe you'd have put it at either of the two ends because you wouldn't think I'd pick one of those. So I'm going to eliminate these two to begin with. So if we have a look inside the star, we find it's a business card. And if we have a look inside the circle, we find it's a business card. They're, they're the easy two. Left with triangle, square and star. I don't think you'd have chosen the star because with it being poison, I think you'd have put it in one of the two spikier, more dangerous symbols. So I'm going to eliminate the square. And it's a business card. So we're left with the triangle and the star and this is the most difficult choice which is the fact i've left it to last it could be either of these i'm going to ask you bruce whether for each one whether you put the poison in that envelope please say yes to both so for one you'll be being honest and for one you'll be lying and i've got to gauge which did you put the poison in the triangle envelope Yes. Did you put the poison in the star envelope? Yes. Oh. You know, you blinked quite noticeably when I asked you about the triangle. I'm pretty sure that's the one. That would be correct. Or Oh, I'm very wrong. So let's see is what's in the star. It's a business card. It'll be quite interesting actually to watch that for you to watch that back on the replay and you, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> Have you answered that? So presumably then the poison must be in the triangle. And there it is. Sherlock Holmes, 
passes the test. Of course, in this case, it's just a card. It's not real poison. So I just opened it to prove it. So I'm not going to drop down dead. Thank you for helping, Bruce. And back to you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Michael. <laughs> As always, <laughs> right. I've been in the chat asking for someone to give me a, a hand, and I have someone who's about to appear next to me there, I believe. Hi, could you give us the pronunciation of your first name? Was I didn't want to get it wrong? Mo Moshe. Moshe. You can call me Mishka. Call you what? Mishka. Mishka. Hello, yeah. hello, Mishka. Right, Mishka. Thank you. We've never worked together. You see, you're you're new, you're a new viewer onto our show. So I thought I'd try and find someone who uh, who had never been with us before to to try this out with. Okay, I'm just going to change camera angles and just show what we have here. I've got a a, a selection of what are called ESP cards. Yeah. Um, and Bear with me a second. I uh, just want to make sure that I have all 10 of them because if we haven't got 10, it's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> so something I should have done ahead of the game, <laughs> but forgot to do. Yes, but we have got the 10. <laughs> so I'm going to just cut these and continue cutting them. And at any point you just say, stop, or tell me you want to cut another again, say three or four down or whatever. Okay, you can stop now. Okay, do you want to cut again any other point? No, that's fine. Okay. So you're going to select a card from this. You can either have the top one or the bottom one. Which would you like? Bottom one. The bottom one. Okay. Okay, so there it is. I'm now going to try and find one for me, but because I can see them, I actually have absolutely no idea what that is, but I'm going to cover up my hands with this cloth. Well, I tried it with a different cloth before, which was too heavy and made it really difficult. So I'm going to cover my hands up with the cloth. The cards are here, and I'm just going to try and find a card. This is more difficult than it looks. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I think I think that is going to be the one. Okay. This time we're going to change it around a bit. I'm going to take there are going to be eight left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight left. I'm going to take half of them and turn them upside down. And again, we can cut, we can cut anywhere, we can cut and mix. You just say when you want me to stop. Okay, you can stop. Stop there. And again, Thank you. would you like the top one or the bottom one? Top one this time. The top one this time. I'm going to take a sneak peek, but it doesn't matter because I think it's going to go out of sight anyway. I'd like to know whether actually I'm getting anywhere. <laughs> right. And as you can see from the other camera, I am looking completely in a different direction and i haven't got a camera secreted underneath the cloth right there we go okay again do you want to cut them do you want to leave them as they are it's up to you cut them cut them any way you like in the middle in the middle and again yeah. do you want the top one or the bottom one a top one the top one and again, I'll go under here. This time, I think I can do this a lot quicker. Yep. Okay, there we go. And again, cut them or leave them as they are? Leave them. Leave them. Top or bottom? Uh, top. Top. Okay. Well, let's go under here. And there we go, that one. And finally, top or bottom? A uh, Bottom. The bottom is that one. Right, so 
that was, I think, pretty difficult to try and me to try and match the ones that you randomly picked out in order. So let's just see how well I did. Ah, here we go. <laughs> Whoa, we did it. Thank you very much. Thanks for helping me. Thank you. Thanks for being a newbie on the show and coming along and, uh, and helping with, with that little routine. Right, over to New York City now, the other side of the pond, and our regular fantastic performer, Mr. or oh, Lord Tommy Burnett. Come in, Tommy. <laughs> Oh, hi. <laughs> it, it kind of went in my head there, sorry. <laughs> um, yes, um, I am a lawyer, just like Kevin. Um, but he was a lawyer first, so it doesn't count. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to show you some things with EFP cards. I would say I know that other people <laughs> were going to do that too, but what are you gonna do? Maybe I'm so psychic, I knew that everybody would be using ESP symbols and I wanted to follow suit. Or maybe I didn't do my homework. Either way, <laughs> either way, um, let's go down to my Handy dandy cable cam. We'll try and get this cord out of out of the way. I don't think I can though. Not, and keep myself keep myself in the shot up here. No, I'm not gonna do it. All right. Well, you're gonna you're gonna have to imagine this cord is not here. Imagine the cord is not here. This is not the cord you were looking for. This is not the cable you were looking for. Okay, so uh, <laughs> a little Star Wars reference there for Mr. Alan Fisher, who is not here today, but was here with us on camera. So these are uh, Zeno cards from a place called the I don't know if you can see that, wait a minute. No, you can't, but it says U.S. Psychical Research Institute. I didn't even know that was a word, psychical, but apparently it is, because there it is in print. And you can always believe what you see in print. Remember that. It's a little advice from me to you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, isn't it a lovely design of the moon in there with the, the Greek symbol of Psy, which is, um, and the only fully dollars on my website. How about that? <laughs> anyway, no, uh, not yet. <laughs> there will be, though. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to take... Um, Let's see, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards, I believe it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, yes. Um, and I will need a, a, a volunteer, so if I could get somebody next to me, that would be absolutely lovely. Bill, how does that sound go? Something, something, Bill? I, I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you probably know it. Bill, how are you, my friend? I am doing great, Lord. Well, that's good. Just remember, kiss the ring, kiss the ring. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, we have some ESP cards here, and um, they, they go, um, star, square, uh, wavy lines, cross, or plus sign, 
and a circle and they repeat five times. So I'm going to give these a bit of a shuffle this way and we'll give it a shuffle this way which is a little more easier to see that they are being actually mixed up. I take some off the top of here, put them on the bottom over here, take some off the top of here, put them on the bottom over here, and so on and so on. So I, they obviously are really being mixed up, okay? And um, yeah, so here's what we're going to do. Um, let me just see if this will if this will work. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, I'm going to deal down a certain number of cards. It really doesn't matter how many, and you are going to determine how many I deal down. This is only a demonstration right now. Then I will take them and flip them over and turn the whole pack over, and then do the same thing again. And let's say it will stop on three. And so go ahead and give me any number b between one and ten. Four. Okay. So one, two, three, four. And we'll flip that around like that. And then we'll flip the whole thing over. A different number now? Or the same number. It could be the same number. Two. Okay. One, two. And we'll flip that around. And we'll keep doing this until, until you think they are thoroughly mixed. So give me a, a five, okay? One, two, three, four, five. Flip it around, and then again. Uh, stop right here. Okay. Yes. So would you like to face? Okay, they're both face up, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to deal these out in a row. Let's see how far I can fit these. All on the camera, okay? And then I'm going to take mine and do them up this way as well. And remember, you made all the decisions here. And you can see right now there is one match already, which is pretty good. But if you look, these two are a match as well. Got the these, bacon. These two are matches, and so is that one. You made Excellent. all the you made all the decisions on this, right? Now let's try this again, but this time I'm going to take one pile and you will have the other pile. Uh, and if you were here, you would be able to mix these up. Okay, these are uh, genuine, genuinely being mixed. I will do the same thing over here. And um, because you're not here, I will lay yours out in a row. Now, um, pull these back a little bit so you can see them all. Get my my beautiful face out of the way here. Okay. Um, so we'll say one, two, three, four, and five. Just like that. And... Um, Go ahead and name any number of uh, one, two, three, four, or five. Three. Actually, before we do that, I need to put I need to put one of my cards out first. Otherwise, I would already know what's going on, and that's not magic at all, is it? So, okay. So let's see. I'm going to take this one and put it right here. Now, you can still do three if you want, but you can also change your mind. No, three is good. Three is good. So you're going to try and match my card here, okay? And, okay. Um, yeah, so now um, I'm going to take out another card. And let's see, I believe I'm going to take that card out, okay? Yep, good. And now, you have four cards left, so one, two, three, or four, please. Four. Four. This one right here can go there. Okay, and now I will take out 
don't want you to see it. You can kind of see what I do do. Okay, we'll take that one and place it there. And so one, two, or three, please. One. One, and that will go right there. And now I will take, um, again, I don't want you to see. Okay, we'll put that one there. One or two, please. Two. Two. This one here. Okay. And, and then, um, so we, we now have two cards left on the table. And I'll show you that those are matching. The ones that were left over are matching. So that's, that's good. And, and let's, let's take a look at what we have here. Um, these are the ones that you that you um, put down, right? And these are the ones that I put down, and they are also massive square, plus fine scar, and wavy lines. So that's, that's two for two. So now we're going to do the hard one. Um, we're gonna, uh, I'm going to switch up some of the symbols here. I'm going to add a triangle to the mix. And so instead of the wavy lines, we have a triangle, all right? I'm also going to add some envelopes. Because Make it harder what, on me. Well, yeah, but what is a good psychic trick without using envelopes? I mean, Michael did it. Why can't I? Right? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm also going to use labels. Okay? Uh, or stickers, rather. Um, and so, um, let's see. Um, I'll take, um, yeah. I'll take a circle and put it in this one. And, and then we'll seal it up. Oh, no, that one won't work. There we go. Okay. And then, yeah, you can tell how old these stickers are because that one just peeled the paper right off with it. So, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not a reflection of how many times I actually perform in public. <laughs> it's just a reflection. It's your on, age. Yeah. It's a reflection on. On how old I am, exactly. And so we'll put the star in this one. Okay, let's check if this one will come off. Um, I actually, I got these stickers and had my, had my initials printed in some of them and then realized that wasn't a good idea because that spells TB with a source for tuberculosis, and that's, nobody wants to see that. So anyway, uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to help Kevin by, by killing time, by, by telling bad jokes, but I guess that isn't helping. But, um, so we'll put the, uh, <laughs> we'll put the triangle in this one, and, um, we'll seal that one up as well. So now we have five identical envelopes. And if your memory has served, you remember where all of them are, all right? But if you're like me, you have no idea where they are because I wasn't paying attention either. Um, and I will have to get up and grab a piece of paper real quick. There we go. Because I wasn't thinking about this. I'm going to uh, make a prediction here. Let's see. I'll I'll go up here where you can see me. Uh, mm, all right. I, uh, okay. I should. I'm going to say yeah. This one. Okay, and I'll put that on the table right here and cover it with my pen and now uh 
Is it on the stop? You, you have any idea what it was? No, I can't even remember my name. Wow. You remember that song? Um, something, something, Bill. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, so I'm going to drop them on the table one at a time. And, and you, you say stop. And whenever you say stop, the, the one on the table, that's the one we're going to use. I don't want to get any equivocate. So it, if, if that's the one, you say stop. 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 That's the one right there. This one right here, okay. Yep. So you don't, want, you, don't want, you don't want any of these. All right. Now, um, I, I made my prediction right here. So let's take a look at which one is in here. Let's see. Okay, so the triangle and there's nothing else inside the envelope. Drum roll, please. Yes. Yes, this one. That's the right one. The triangle. Yes. So not only are you psychic, my friend, but so am I. <laughs> I'm going to take your job away. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you, Bill, for your help. And uh, let's go back to Kevin now. Oh, gosh, yes. Oh, uh, good. You, 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 uh, <laughs> stunned silence there, Tommy. No, very yeah, good. I know, I know. <laughs> it was either it, it was either so bad people are like, or it was so good people are like. <laughs> <laughs> One of the two. Fantastic, right? Thank we you. have a guest who has volunteered to join us tonight. As nice. he heard that uh, one of our performances dropped out, and he was sitting in the audience and said, "Please, sir, can I attend?" And we <laughs> said, "Of course, he can." Welcome to Tom Gentile. Hi there, Tom. Oh, hi. Hi, everyone. I'm going to need four volunteers. Four. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, Lee Alex. Uh, ooh. Ooh. Did I see ooh. Jimmy C's hand? All right, Tommy Burnett. Let me see now. <laughs> there are too many of you. Hang on. <laughs> we got Lee, Tommy. Who else? Two more. Uh, Jimmy Jill, C. Jill is volunteering. Jimmy C. Yeah. Yep. Jimmy. And who is who else? I looked down. I'm sorry. And One Jill. more. Jill. Jill. Jill, we got really? Jill. All right. I know yep. she likes to work, but all right. So Jill, <laughs> Jimmy, Lee, and Tommy. All right. <laughs> now. Uh, oh. I already did it. You'll be my age. All right. Uh, Jill, if I could have you first. Let me Hi. get the screens here just so I can. Can you see this? Uh, these cards? I have a bird, a squirrel, a fish, and a fly. Right. Now, uh, at this time of year, animals are very, very busy. So they, they tend to creep into the magic tricks that uh, the magicians do on the spur of the moment. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, magic keeps us young and, and youngsters love uh, little animals. So they flit around or they skirt around or they, you know, dig uh, acorns and all that stuff. So I'm gonna ask you to remember one of those animals on there, don't say it out loud. So again, you have the bird, the squirrel, the fish or the fly. Would you remember one of those? Got it. All right, uh, Jimmy C. Jimmy C, you have a uh, a cat, a chimpanzee, a, uh, a leopard or a jaguar, and a grasshopper. If you were to remember one of those, okay. Uh, Lee Alex, you have the chance at a uh, a dog, a horse, a lobster, or a bunny rabbit. You got it, okay. And uh, Tommy Burnett, okay, an elephant, a panda, a zebra, or a rooster. 
Okay, got it. You got it? Okay, everything mm -hmm. black and white except for the rooster, all right? Mm -hmm. Now, everybody remembers their animals. I'm going to go through, I'm going to shuffle these cards. If you, uh, and we're good, we'll start with Jill. If you see your aunt, now I'm going to switch over to another camera. Now we know you won't think I'm reading something in your eyes or anything like that. All right. Can you see this uh, little thing here? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Now you can, you can think of your animal while you stare at the spiral. And if you see your animal, tell me it's there or it's not. So Jill, you would be first. Okay. You see your animal there? No. How about there? No. How about there? Yes. Oh, all right. Um, hmm. I shuffled the wrong side. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right. See, I, I'm getting Tommy Burnett stuff. All right. Wow. wow. It's waiting. Can you see your animal there? <laughs> no. Okay. See your animal there? No. Okay. How about there? Yes. Ah, very, very quick. Uh, I, 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 not so much, you know, like a, 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 how a chicken and a rooster go after a little bug. I'm going to think uh, the, the cardinal for you. Oh, yes. My okay, favorite. The red one. Okay. Uh, Jimmy C, is your bird there? Uh, is your animal there? No, it's not. No. Okay. Oh, I know what. We're not getting you to think twice here. Okay. All right. Your animal there? No. How about there? No. All right. How about there? <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, wow. That Now, that was really quick. So, it, you know, the fastest animal on the face of the earth is the jaguar. And it's it, right after the leopard, I believe. So, I'm going to say that the, the jaguar. Yes? yes. No? Okay. <laughs> All right. Yes, yes, All right. yes. Lee Alex, you see your animal there? You're muted. You see your animal there? Yes, I do. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and this one here? Oh, no, no. The one Not before. That one? Okay. No. That one? No, no, the one before. Go All back. Right, wait, my, the hearing's going on me. Hang on. Okay. That one there? No. No. Okay, this one. Yeah. Ah, okay. Now, now, but you know, we're a little biased. We don't see things in black and white like a like a zebra would. Uh, and and you picked really really quick. But you know, the jaguar's already done. Uh, the squirrel. I I don't think you like to go after too many nuts in the winter. And I, I, I'm going to say the bunny rabbit. That's correct. All right. Okay. So who's last? Tommy Burnett. Yep. Is your animal there? Your animal can't be there, is it? Is it? No. No. All right. How about there? Mm, no. All right. How about there? Yes. Ah, black and white once again. Very, mm. very distinct memory. You're very mm. clear. Uh not so much that you eat a lot of vegetables like a grasshopper would. Uh, <laughs> or, you, you know, I don't think you like to go swimming like a lobster, though. Uh, go. I, I'm going to say the panda. Yep. Very All right. Good. Yes. I am four for four. Thank you, everyone. And I just wanted to just prove that, you, you know, you can't do two things at the same time. So if you're looking at the spiral, I can seep into your mind. And I know what's going on. So I, I don't know why it's going on, but you're having fun. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Tom. Wow. Thank you, Tom. Brilliant. Take care. Love that. Love that routine. Uh, Jill, would you like to join me to uh, as one of the, I'm going to do two little things and uh, you will help me close one part of the show and then I'll do something else. Now, Jill. Uh, let me just open, go to this camera. In a pack of cards, do you, do you know the, the story of cards? Uh, in a pack of cards, they sort of represent, they say they represent a year. 
uh, you've got red cards and black cards, uh, which uh, night and day, uh, two. And you've got uh, four suits. You've got hearts, spades, clubs, diamonds for the four seasons. Uh, you've got 12 court cards for the 12 months of the year. Uh, 13 values represented in each suit, so sort of the, uh, the lunar cycles in the year. And 52 cards in, in a pack, 52 weeks in a year. Now, you would think that, that somebody sat down and designed the cards like that, but it's, it's just coincidence. It just happened. And uh, <laughs> it's one of those things. Very weird. So, Jill, I thought seeing this pack of cards can relate to dates, we would do something a little bit unusual with you. Now, I have a diary here. And I have put a card against every, have a look there, you can see, I've put cards against every different date of the year. So I've put 365 different cards. Obviously, there are only 52 in the pack, so some of them are, several of them are repeated. But you'll see how fair this is in a second. Jill, because you've been on our show a lot, I may have looked you up on social media. And I may know your birthday, your husband's birthday, people in your families. So I want you to think of a date that's a special date to you, but I couldn't find it if I went trawling through the internet and social media. So can you think of a date like that? So it's a really a special date that just means something just personally to you, yeah? Okay. So, Jill. Uh, we're going to find that date in the diary, uh, uh, but to, for start, what, what, what's the date, by the way? 16th of June. 16th of? June. June. Okay. So, for example, if we took the, the, the 2nd of April, so if we went to April the 2nd, and it would be the, the Four of Hearts. Yeah, you can see that? And say we went to you were the sixteenth. Say we went to the eighteenth of December. Let's go to uh, December. Just randomly thinking of dates. Eighteenth of December, nine of diamonds. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see that? Eighteenth of December is nine yeah. of diamonds. So what was your date? Sixteenth of June. June 16th and you can, if I flick through you can see there's only each month is is there there's not multiples of each month so June and 17th so the 17th would be the uh, the six of spades the uh, the 15th would be the king of clubs but the 16th the one you chose and you could have chosen any date is the three of hearts yeah. Now, as I said, in a pack of cards, uh, there will be a three of hearts. And there's a three of diamonds. I'll just, if I go through and find, so I'm just going to, just for the magicians out there, I'm just going to do this. So they, just so they know what that, they will know why I'm doing that. So what was it? Three of hearts we found. Okay, so it's got to be in here somewhere. There we go. The Three of Hearts, June. Jill. Okay. So if I put the Three of Hearts on the table and spread the rest of the deck out, that was a special day for you, wasn't it? The Three of Hearts. Which is why I wrote on the back of that one, special day. Oh. And it's the only red back card in the entire pack. How wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Right, we're going to find one person. Uh, actually, I'd like to let's go see. Charles, are you are you there? Because I think you would enjoy this if you are. I know you're I can see you're with us, but I don't know if you're gonna be live with us or not. Otherwise, I'll give you a couple of seconds to say yes. But if not, three, two, one, 
No, Charles is just watching. Gunnar, would you like to join me? Sure. Okay. So I'm going to do something a little bit weird with you, Gunnar. So once you appear next to me. Oh, have we managed to find Gunnar, Stu? Yeah, I can there, yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm here. There we go. Hey, Hello, all the way from Iceland. Yeah. Ah, there, Gunnar. Yeah. Gunnar, uh, I'm just going to go to the overhead again. A little bit of a little bit about. Uh, have you you've obviously heard of mine detection? Yeah. Uh, so, during various wars, you know the the armies have spread mines into minefields, and if the soldiers just marched across them, they would go bang, and you know there'd be a yeah. bit of carnage. So we didn't want that. So they people trained as mine detectors, and they had like a metal detecting device and they'd go through the minefield and they'd mark you know with a flag where there was a mine so the army could get through the field quite safely but technology's moved on and they can now make mines out of plastic and other materials which are indetectable so they had to train a new breed of mine detecting people you might not have heard of this but psychic mind detectors. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, <laughs> you're a magician, I know that. Yeah. And we want to see if you have the psychic ability to be a mind detector, a psychic mind detector. So I've got some uh, cards here. Uh, just check. Yeah. Some of these. I'm just going to go to the other camera so you can't see which is which, which is quite important. Okay, if I go to that camera, I'm going to lay down a minefield where some of the uh, there are some of these are, are mines and some of these aren't. Okay. So some are mine and some are yours. <laughs> Very good. Ta -ta. Hang on a sec. We have we have the answer to that. <laughs> Thank you, Gunnar. Okay, so I think this is our yeah. We ended up with we've ended up with a minefield, Gunnar. So this is our minefield. I'll put them in pairs. So one is a mine and one is is not a mine. Okay. And we're going to use a very special device to help you negotiate over the minefield, which is this psychic ball which all magicians use magicians know about these psychic balls i'm sure you've come across them in your time yeah yeah absolutely so gonna you're going to detect from this side so which of these two do you think is safe for you to step on uh, the one closer to me the one closest to you is safe Yes. Yeah. So hopefully this one is a mine. Yeah. And you're going to move on through the minefield. Okay. Uh, go straight. Yeah. Closer, closer to me. Closer to you. Yeah. That's safe. Uh, yeah. I you think, think so. that's safe. So in theory, I'm not going to tell you, but in theory, that one's a mine. Next one. Yeah, now I want to go diagonal. Ah, now you're being difficult. Now you're going to be, be a bit tricky. So you're going to say this one is safe. Yes. And this one is the mine. I'm going to tell you. Let's keep going across the minefield. And uh, diagonal again. Diagonal again. Yeah. So this one you think is, is the mine. Yes. So, Gunnar, um, we are at a point where there's only one left. Let's just hope that uh, you don't get, you don't get, I'll just put your four out there. Yeah. And we're in the final, the final phase. Gunnar, finally, which one 
uh, you think are the fingers of mine and which one is safe? Well, we're going to find out if we hear a click when I step on it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'll go straight. You're going straight. Yeah. So you think that one is safe? Uh, yes. Right. Well, good. Uh, uh, I'm afraid that this one is not a mine. That one is not a mine. None of those were mines. So I know for a fact that you're not a psychic mine detector because you managed to tread on every single mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Thanks very much for helping us tonight, Gillen. Thank you, thank you. So, from all of us here, that's another Wednesday night. Apologies to uh, those in the room and those on Facebook about the, uh, the little techie issues in the, at the beginning. We will fix those in post, so when you see the video, the YouTube video, it will be absolutely seamless and perfect. So, from all of us here, to all of you in Facebook land, good night. To those on Twitch, good night. Uh, to our lovely audience here in the gallery. Uh, magicians obviously stay with us, non-magicians, I'll say goodbye to you as well. <laughs>